bromoethanes proton coupled and decoupled carbon 13 NMR spectrums. So on top we have the proton couple uh, proton coupled spectrum and below the, the decoupled. So there's our bromoethane and uh, down here yep proton decoupled spectrum. We have one signal there, two signals there, TMS at zero, and it, it turns out the carbon that's attached to the bromine is, is signal one, and the one attached to the further from bromine, that's signal two. And this proton decoupled spectrum, simple, two carbons, two signals, TMS, the internal standard there. Let's look at the uh, above at the proton coupled where we allow the hydrogens attached to the carbons to couple the carbons when we do this it gets a lot more complicated it, it could be very useful but it, i've made this i've made these peaks up myself so they're kind of perfect so in reality it probably wouldn't look this nice and easy to read but we'll learn a lot by looking at this so here i have this is signal one when you allow the proton coupling so decoupled once one peak for that signal one when you allow the protons to couple, when I say protons, remember, I'm talking about the hydrogen one nuclei. Okay, when I allow our hydrogens to couple, it comes up with four, eight, 12 peaks for just the one carbon. And then signal two here, instead of just one signal, it's a total of what, three, six, 12 total? This quartet thing here. So what's going on? Then we have our TMS over there at zero, and TMS is a quartet as well. We saw that before, the carbons have three hydrogens on them. Three hydrogens and plus one is four. There we go. So let's look, see what's happening. Let's look a little closer at this structure. We'll focus first on just signal one. Let's explain this. So signal one here, it's a carbon with two hydrogens attached to it. Those two hydrogens will cause the, the big triplet. So, the, so since they're directly attached to the carbon, they cause the large coupling. So like this one, two, three groups of signals is like a triplet of signals. That's caused by the ones directly attached to it. Makes sense. Now these hydrogens, when I'm talking about carbon one signal, they're further from carbon one. So from carbon one, I have to go one, two bonds, where it's here from carbon one, it's like one bond away. So those three hydrogens are further away. And if you had to guess, you'd probably guess, like you see here, that they would have uh, smaller coupling constants and, and they wouldn't couple the carbons as much. So these three hydrogens further from carbon one cause small quartet coupling of each triplet part. So this is the quartet caused by those three, another quartet caused by those three, another quartet caused by those three. So we think of this as a, this signal one as a triplet of quartets. I've got three quartets, a triplet of quartets. Or you can think of it as like, I have a uh, triplet that got quartetified or a quartetified triplet. So each part of the triplet is split into a quartet. Pretty crazy, huh? Let's look at this other one then, signal two, the same way. So this is signal two, the hydrogens directly attached to it, there's three of those. So they cause the large coupling and that large coupling is a one, two, three, four, a quartet. So three hydrogen neighbors attached to that carbon, causing a quartet. And then these two hydrogens that are further from the carbon two signal, they cause each of the quartets to be split into a triplet. And they have a smaller coupling constant because they're, they're further away. So these two hydrogens further from carbon two cause small triplet coupling of each quartet part. So this signal two is a quartet of triplets or Q of T. So quartet one, two, three, four, and each is a triplet, 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 triplet. You can also think of it as a triplified quartet, like I said earlier. So yeah, you can see if you allow your protons to couple your carbons during your carbon-13 NMR spectrum, you get a lot of signals. And this is just a simple molecule with two carbons attached to it. If you have more than two carbons, then you'll get a lot more signals and it can get to be overwhelming and they can start to overlap and then it's, it's just hard to read. So we don't normally do this. We almost always do the proton decoupled carbon NMR spectrum where one carbon, one signal, two carbons.
a carbon signal two. Yeah, whatever, you know what I'm saying. And uh, this is what I was saying, I was alluding to before when I said carbon 13 NMR can get so complicated that we simplify it. So in carbon 13 NMR, we don't have to really worry usually at all about coupling and things like that. So it's in a way, it's a lot easier than hydrogen NMR because if we allow it to be, it can be so much more complex. Okay, back to the uh, spectroscopy introduction.